What's up, you guys? Welcome to another episode of Adulting with Joy Spring, the how-tos of your 20s told by a 20-something, traversing through life expectantly and with gusto. Today, for our episode, we are going to be talking about how to be confident in your first job interview or in any job interview at that. I get a lot of messages from people who are always worried about going into their first job interview as we have a lot of listeners who are college graduates or you don't you didn't even go through college from high school you started working or you're currently working and you feel like you want to change your careers i think the reason why this question is constantly asked is actually a good thing it's because we want to be at our best state when we do something, right? So it's a great thing that you're asking what you can do to ace a job interview. And it really is true, first impressions do last, but first impressions don't have to be the only impression that people have of you. So if you feel like you've been getting a lot of bad first interviews, or if you feel like you haven't been getting the jobs that you want, well, fret not, because I don't have the answers for you, but I do offer some solutions that might help you be more confident in the next job interview or even in the next date that you'll be having. Okay, so let's start it off with step number one. And this is very basic and it's something that I think you can, anybody can really figure out and prepare for. And the first step is to dress appropriately. Dress appropriately for your job interview. If your job interview and if the job that you're applying for is something that is in the more creative or artistic side, make sure that you're wearing something that represents who you are very well, very artistic or very creative. If you are applying for a job that's very professional or corporate, make sure that you're wearing the proper clothes as well. So if that means, you know, wearing your power suit or wearing a nice dress and wearing heels, even just for that time, it really is something that you should do. Now, I say this not because physical appearance or your physical attributes is everything, but it will change the way that you interact with people and it will change the way that people look at you. And apart from that, it also changes your mood. Diba? Sometimes what you wear, it really changes the way that you you carry yourself. Ako, even if people can't see my shoes, when I'm in front of the camera, I try to always wear my high heels because it changes my posture. It gives me this kind of boost and confidence. And, and, you know, dressing properly will give you that same kind of feeling. Now, one of the problems that you will probably encounter if you're just applying for a new job or for a different job uh, in dressing properly is where will you get all these nice clothes well you don't have to spend a lot of money to get good clothes first thing that you can do is you can borrow from people now you can borrow from your from your parents from your siblings if they have nicer clothes than your even your best friends or your close friends who you know have great closets just borrow clothes from them make sure that you clean it before you use it and make sure that you clean it after you use it and return it properly to the owners one second is and I know that not a lot of people will probably do this, but I have done this so many times. Go to Ukay Ukay. There are so many things that you can find that are great in Ukay Ukay. Kahit yung mga corporate, work, uh, corporate wear na yan, some of the nicest blazers that I have or the cutest uh, pants and, and shirts that I have are all from Ukay Ukay or Tai Tai Market. You can, you can really dress well even without spending a lot of money. So be creative about it. Dress appropriately to ace that interview. Number two, focus on your strengths. I feel like the reason why we're always nervous when going into an interview is because we are well aware of both, not just our strengths, but so aware of our weaknesses. And one of the things that I think debilitate us from being able to present ourselves well is that we focus on our weaknesses. For example, if you are not a great leader, you're a good follower, or if you are not a great team player, you're a great leader. Or, for example, mahina ka mag-English, but talagang magaling ka lang mag-Tagalog. Ibang language ka mas komportable. Some people tend to focus on what they can't do instead of what they can do. So, I would advise you to really focus on your strengths and what you think you can offer this company. If it's a company that goes into tech or whatever bit business it may be, the reason why you're applying for this position is because, well, one, you need a job, and two, you probably know that there's something that you can offer to help this company. So focus on that. Focus on your strengths. Before going into the interview, sit yourself down and 
well, step number three is to do your research, but sit yourself down and write down all the things that you think are your strengths, whether it's, for example, you finished a particular course that really catered to this particular job, or you've worked with these kinds of people and these kinds of brands and these kinds of companies that you think will really give you strength and diversity. So write down all of your strengths and make sure to focus on those things when you do your interview. But a reminder for everyone to not oversell naman. Don't be dishonest in the way that you are presenting yourself. Work on your strengths and tell people and tell the person that that's interviewing you what your strengths are and what you can offer the company, but also don't blatantly lie to them and tell them and offer them things that you know you can't give them. That brings me to number three. First is dress appropriately. Second is to know your strengths and your weaknesses uh, and be teachable at that too. If you know what your weaknesses are and people touch on that during the interview, just tell them and be honest with them. That's right. That's actually not something that I'm very, very good at, but I am willing to learn. I'm willing to grow in this company. So you can do that. The third is to do your research. Do your research on the company that you're applying for and do your research in the position that you want to attain. When you do your research, you go into the interview, no knowing exactly what you're getting yourself into and you also know exactly what you can offer and what not just what you can offer the company but also what the company can offer for you and another thing is if you go into that interview not knowing anything about the position you're applying for or the company that you want to work for when they start asking you questions about the company ay nakakahiya if you don't know anything about them right so if you find a personal connection between you and this company or if you've had experiences uh, being a customer of this company or you know me personally, for example, when I started working for Unahirit, I had such a personal connection with them because I was watching them when I was a kid. So I would just, it's not, it's technically research in that way that I was going back to, hey, what were my memories when I was a child watching this particular morning show? And that really helped me connect not just with the show, but also with a lot of the hosts. Fourth is, I think, something that a lot of people will really, I guess, relate with. It's to answer in the language that you're most comfortable in. If you're not comfortable speaking in Filipino or if you're not comfortable in speaking in English, make sure that you answer their questions in the language that you are most comfortable in. Now, I don't want you to be rude and just be like, you know, ka ng English, sasagot ka ng Tagalog, or kinakausap ka ng Tagalog, sasagot ka ng English. Pero kung saan ka man comfortable, you can actually be honest with your interviewer and say, sorry po, alam ko po na nagtatanong kayo in English, pero mas comfortable po ako na sumagot in Filipino. Okay lang po ba? And you'll actually find that a lot of these interviewers and these companies are very gracious to understand where you're coming from. You just have to be honest and you have to really tell them beforehand para hindi ka mag-struggle when you're answering their questions already. And last but definitely not the least, my fifth point is to always remember that whatever your job interview is, your life does not depend on it. Granted, it's very important for you to get this job. It's very important for you to be responsible and provide for yourself and probably for your family. But one thing that you have to remember is that your work is not who you are. And you have to always figure out that I go into this interview, I'm going to give my 100% and I need to get this job. So I need to give my best, right? But if you don't get this job, always remember that that's a door closing and another window opening. It's just another window window of opportunity. An example of this is when maybe five years ago, when I wanted to go into radio, I did a, a job interview and an audition for a particular uh, radio station that rejected me. And I was so hurt because I was working already in TV at that time and I was doing my digital work and I was just so hurt that they didn't get me. But lo and behold, a couple of months after Magic 89.9, aka the best FM station in the Philippines, messaged me to sit in one of their shows with Boom Gonzalez and I eventually got that job. And Magic is one of the biggest blessings, not just in my career, but also in my personal life and that I grew exponentially as a host and as a content creator during my stay in Magic because particularly of that company and of the people in that company. So if you don't get the job that you're preparing for right now, do not fret. 
I know it seems like the world is crumbling just right in front of you, but that's okay. It's okay to not get this job. And you always have to be creative. You can't depend on one particular job just to give you money or to, to let you survive, right? You have to be creative. These days, there are so many ways for you to earn money and to make a living for yourself. So that's the first part of my point number five. The second part is, if you do get this job and it's not particularly the job that you were aiming for, still go for it. I have done many jobs that I thought at that time were just a a step for me to get to where I wanted only to realize that this is really what I wanted to do and this is really what I was meant to do and that's like hosting for me. I never wanted to become a host. I only was doing it because I wanted to have a job that will fuel my music career only to realize that I actually really enjoyed hosting more than doing my music after a couple of years of doing this. So look at every job as an opportunity to move forward. And when you look at it that way, you will grow not just in that particular career or in that particular job path, but you will also grow in your character and in your values. And there is always something to learn from the people who are working above you and who are working with you. So always look at it in those ways. So there. So that's it for this episode of Adulting with Joy Spring. I hope this particular episode will help you prepare for your next job interview. As always, I would love to hear from you guys. So if you would like to, please don't forget to leave comments down below and also go to joyspring.com for all of the show notes. My question of the day is... What is the particular job that you're aiming for and what are the steps that you're taking to finally attain that goal? Send them over to joyspring.com or through the comment section.